Hi, my name is Jack Stinner, Associate Professor of Art and Technology in the School of Art and Art History at the University of Florida. My co-author is Dr. Gregory Omer, Professor Emeritus, Film and Media Studies, also at the University of Florida. We are members of a collective called the Florida Research Ensemble, or FRE, FREE, and the title of this talk is Mood Themes the World. The urbanist Paul Virilio warned that the civilization of light speed, the dromosphere, produced by digital technologies, created conditions for a general accident that happens everywhere, simultaneously. His argument was that every invention included its own accident. Bernard Stiegler continued the insight, warning that the industrialization of artificial memory gave commerce direct access to human libidinal energy, threatening a desire accident, the matrix nightmare. How do we respond to this challenge? Apparatus theory, a hybrid of McLuhan and Derrida, offers a comprehensive hypothesis. The point of departure is in the most familiar use of apparatus, Louise Althusser's Ideological State Apparatus, or ISA. Ideology is defined as the imaginary relation of people to their real conditions of existence. Four institutions are responsible for producing these relations in society, home, church, school, and media. Alain Badu, Althusser's student, revised this set as love or psychoanalysis, politics or law, science, and art, each institution responsible for its own truth procedure, creating conditions making philosophy possible. The inside of apparatus, drawing from theories uh, by Vico and Gilbert Seemenden, is that these institutions are part of a stack or a cognitive map of homologous levels from individual human body through the ISAs to the historical epics of the apparatus, paleo, orality, literacy, and electricity. The argument is that each epic produces its own metaphysics that undergo dephasing into the next epic. The shift from one phase to the next is catastrophic in Rene Tom's terms, disruptive, requiring innervation, an invention of a new metaphysics adapting people to the new conditions which include mutations in the human sensorium itself, plasticity. Each apparatus includes a native technology, institution, and identity behavior. The prototype is literacy, oral society acquiring alphabetic writing. Plato opening the first school, undertaking the invention of method, the logic augmenting reason, and creating the dialogue form, dramatizing the performance of selfhood personified in Socrates. Science, or engineering, with its technological invention of the Industrial Revolution, proved to be a pharmacon, as Stiegler warned defacing into electricity with the poison gift of the Anthropocene. The institution native to electricity, individuating the visceral faculty of sensation or appetite, is the corporation, inscribing capitalism with the supporting mathematical inventions of probability in the stock market to manage risk. The creation of the commodity form, the separation of exchange value from use value supported this new behavior of consumption as advertising exploited new media inventions to access human libido, the locus of the new causality of electricity, humanity itself, the lesson of Oedipus. The vanguard arts revolution in 19th century Momar created the metaphysics needed to educate the dromosphere, culminating in the cabaret Voltaire, the invention of Dadaism as entertainment constituted the academy of electricity. Las Vegas is direct heir of the cabaret arts, the casinos themed as fantasized cities, Venice in the Venetian. The prototype of theming is Disneyland, the republic of electricity, with Walt Dirt Disney earning designation as our Plato by his mastery of the plasmatic line and his animated cartoons, translating the formal device of pure art into mass entertainment. 
The new category created in the cabarets is the simulacrum, a copy without an original. It functions as caricature, selecting just a few traits to produce a hyperreal effect. It is more real than reality itself. The elements for producing a new cognitive map or existential positioning system that can reorient society are available in vernacular electricity emerging in transmedia worlds. One of the telling facts of our epoch is that cinema and psychoanalysis appeared in the same year, each innervating a dimension of visceral capability. Cinematic imaging articulates unconscious desire. Just as written syllogisms articulated rational cognition or performed rituals articulated behavioral belief, cinema was invented through learning how to tell a story in film. The process developed multiple layers of coherence from story at the highest level of archetypal familiarity, adding further layers of coherence with narrative form, character performance, image design, and musical pattern gathering together now in worlds of mood. It is perhaps counterintuitive to say that world is the least organized of the series. Evoked is atmosphere, a feeling, an intuition of how we want life to be in the modality of impossible fantasy. Media augmentation of the formal devices of vanguard aesthetics, the little sensations, trigger unconscious involuntary experience in which fantasy is defense against anxiety or attraction versus repulsion. Described as the architecture of reassurance, Disneyland functioned as an antidote to Cold War anxiety. Our hypothesis is that world theming has created a vernacular discourse that may be raised to a second power of theopraxesis in service of innervation, as philosophy raised written epics into truth or poetry raises everyday language into beauty. The educational project does not stop with adaptation to a visceral consumer society, but adds the imperative to temper the choras, attune the four realities into a harmonious music of the spheres. The immediate claim is that theming in digital media augments mood or ambiance into a power of imagination, just as dialectic in writing augmented logic into a power of reason. Fantasy, touching sensation, is persuasive, just as logical entailment is persuasive in the rational order. Decisions determining real events today are being made in worlds of mood. Metaverse is emerging as electrate Cora, a site of innervation, whose purpose is adapting the human sensorium to real-time conditions of dromosphere. In Metaverse, Humanity engages with itself as world demiurge. For this project, we tested the principles of Cezanne's little sensation or Proust's little phrase as poetics of motif, proposing that motif is to electricity what concept is to literacy. In music, a motif is a short succession of notes producing a single impression a brief melodic or rhythmic formula out of which longer passages are developed. In biochemistry, a motif is a distinctive sequence on a protein or a DNA. In essence, a motif is a recognizable pattern. These patterns can be assembled and manipulated to produce a composition or a living organism. This theme can become associated with an artist as their style. Other artists can apply this theme to their work in varying degrees by repurposing the motifs used in the original. A classic example is the Picasso-derived de cubist aspects of Duchamp's New Descending a Staircase from 1912. The key feature of a theme is that we use the sequence of patterns as a device to represent something else, a larger concept or a, or a feeling. The bridges, brickwork, and arch arches that let us recognize Venice become a theme when a casino is represented as Venice in Las Vegas. The production and utilization of machine learning models prevalent in artificial intelligence invoke similar processes of theming that are used or that are unique to electricity. Artists traverse the latent space produced through the training process to reveal motifs that emerge from the theme of the model. 
Machine learning is built around the concept that we can mathematically identify patterns in data sets and encapsulate these relationships in models that can be used to efficiently retrieve probabilities that new input data is similarly related. To work with AI is to work with a motif identification system. AI machine learning models attempt to define a function that provides the best correlation between a set of inputs and outputs. We choose algorithms that are most likely to produce accurate predi predictions for the task at hand. For example, a financial model might be trained on historic trading behavior or geographic housing data. A language model might be trained to predict the next word in a poem or the most likely medical term to describe a set of symptoms. In visual art, the primary models are, of course, vision-based. Vision models have existed in artificial intelligence, specifically the subcategory called machine learning for decades. Convolutional neural networks, or CNNs, were introduced in the late 1980s. By the mid-2010s, advances in GPU technology and new data science techniques resulted in the development of AI vision models that involve billions of parameters and images. These models range from autoregressive generative adversarial networks to the latest transformer and diffusion-based techniques, each competing to be the most comprehensive, fastest, and most accurate technique. Each of these vision models leverages publicly and privately assembled image data sets that data scientists use to pre-train AI vision models for use in subsequent work. Researchers pre-train their models with popularly available data sets so scientific and performance comparisons can be made between their work and those working in associated domains. Shoshana Zuboff, Kate Crawford, and many others have written about how these platforms commodify human interaction to the point of directing individual behavior and the perils of granting such power to these corporations. This power, combined with the fact that the data often codifies social biases and viewpoints that do not reflect our goals as humanitarians, is well covered in the literature. To recognize bias is to acknowledge that the structures of AI are never neutral. Machine models, including our working processes, thematize the subject. Our intention here is not to repeat these critiques. Still, these concerns raise the stakes on the necessity to understand better how the material and ideological apparatus of electricity is constructing our future. World theming is evident in the vernacular art practices arising from recent advances in artificial intelligence. The availability of commodity GPUs, along with public access to advanced research via GitHub, Kaggle, Hugging Face, and the proliferation of forums such as Reddit, Discord, YouTube, and others has resulted in a renaissance of public engagement with technology-informed creative practice. Google's Deep Dream from 2015 inspired generative artists to explore the latent space of convolutional neural networks to creative hallucinatory ends. The public availability of Google's previously internal only development tool, Colab, in late 2017 provided access to cloud-based GPUs and storage systems that had been accessible only to data scientists and academics. In early 2021, Ryan Murdoch released a collab notebook called Big Sleep that combined OpenAI's recently published Contrastive Language Image Pre-Training, or CLIP, with Google DeepMind's Big GAN. Around the same time, Katherine Krausen released a similar notebook that combined VQGAN with CLIP. These notebooks and the many variations they inspired are paradigmatic examples of the power of theme augmenting mood into a vernacular, creative, and imaginative discourse. In 2016, a group of researchers from the University of Toronto published the image model Align Draw, trained on Microsoft's Coco dataset, as well as MNIST, to produce images from natural language descriptions. Murdoch and Krausen's motivations were similar, and they recognized that the CLIP image caption model could be used to guide the image distillation process of Big GAN and VQ GAN, respectively. Contemporary artistic techniques such as style GAN 
allowed one to produce images that mimic the style of a famous artist or mirrored the features of a model trained on a specific data set. Natural language input was exciting to artists because now the concept of mood and mood of a work could be manipulated through the creative construction of a text prompt. By late 2021, 2021, there were multiple derivations of the clip-guided or text-to-image process that incorporated alternative image generation techniques. Open source GitHub repositories with associated Google Colab notebooks stimulated a cottage industry of artists producing images and publishing them on social media. Prompt engineering resources and guides to assist stylistic choices were published in blogs and Google Docs. Many techniques spawned their own Reddit channel where artists posted images and shared their prompts and settings. Immediate feedback and technical support were often available via Discord groups, uh, sometimes populated by the originators of the notebook or repository. Many text-to-image works were produced for the now not-so-burgeoning NFT market. Articles on the future of art and art careers when practically anyone can create an image without hiring, for example, an album artist or a graphic designer have become popular. Clearly, a vernacular image practice and discourse has emerged that is entirely new and expansive in scope. The public availability of Google, Google's Colab notebook system and cloud GPUs was critical to this development. Recently, it appeared that Google and OpenAI are beginning to restrict public access in ways that could undermine vernacular engagement with this technology. In addition to access, they are implementing content filters that restrict words that can be used in a prompt. Well-known artist David O'Reilly posted his opinion that Dolly 2 is a scam on Instagram. For now, a burgeoning community is in inventing new images and techniques using AI vision models. A developing discourse asks essential questions about this technology, who it serves, and what it means. This conversation could only emerge under the conditions made possible by fundamental changes in the apparatus. Heidegger and Lacan identified anxiety as the primary mood of modernity. From film, to theater, to music, to therapy, we deal with this anxiety through fantasy, sublimating or reconciling the attraction repulsion of uncertainty. The history of science fiction is a testament uh, to the power of fantasy in our attempt to imagine the unknown. Contemporary AI image practice shares this tendency. Indeed, many images produced using these techniques are what one would categorize as fantasy images. For example, a simple Google image search for disco diffusion fantasy returns thousands. The success of AI image practice is not surprising. There is a vacuum of creativity in our daily lives. People who never considered themselves artists, typically, typically because of a lack of technical training and the common belief that art requires technical mastery, can now enjoy and seek the optimal mood or flow. Given the wide range of text-to-image work and the fact that much of it is uh, posted somewhat anonymously online, it's difficult to give proper attribution to artists sometimes. Uh, similarly, it can be difficult to access their detailed working processes to reveal the mechanisms of theme at work in the output. In the following, I'll discuss a case study called Dissipative Off-Ramps. The artwork was conceived as an AI-generated traversal of the United States in the spirit of the classic road trip from East Coast to the West. The goal of dissipative off-ramps was to evoke a passion for exploration constantly subverted by entropy or disaster. As much as we want to move forward, we keep repeating the same mistakes. In that sense, the emotion is a sense of sublime or blues. It consists of 10 scenes, each of which is guided by individual text prompts, which we will discuss concerning the topics of theme and mood. Dissipative Off-Ramps is a two-minute, five-second animation produced entirely using Disco Diffusion version 5.4. Disco Diffusion bills itself as a Frankensteinian amalgamation of notebooks, models, and techniques for the generation of AI art and animations. Like many others, it is based on Katherine Krausen's original notebook. Uh, 
It uses her fine-tuned 512 by 512 diffusion model produced with OpenAI's guided diffusion research documented in diffusion models beat GANs on image synthesis. The Disco Diffusion source code can be freely accessed via GitHub and is supported by a large community on R Disco Diffusion and Discord. The Reddit forum was created on February 9th, 2022, and as of July 21st, 2022, it has 8,800 members. In addition, three to 4,000 simultaneous users regularly occupy the Discord server. Most of those working with Disco Diffusion and similar systems will launch or download a Collab notebook from the repository and save it to their Google Drive. In that scenario, the software depends on access to either the free or paid versions of Google Colab uh, for the necessary access to GPU resources. Disco Diffusion can also run locally, uh, for example, if one owns a computer with an NVIDIA GPU or has other means of accessing GPUs. For dissipative off-ramps, we had access to the University of Florida's HyperGator AI DGX A100 SuperPod. Each A100 has 80 gigabytes of memory, allowing us to experiment with all of the available models, even simultaneously, um, that are made accessible in the, in the notebooks themselves, the Disco Diffusion Notebook. For dissipative off-ramps, we typically consumed approximately 40 gigabytes of GPU memory. While it takes more configuration to run locally, the initial setup time is offset by dependable access to plenty of GPU memory and fewer limits on the amount of time needed to produce multi-frame animation. At a resolution of 576 by 1024 pixels, each frame took approximately 12 minutes to render over 300 hours, or 12.5 days, to reach the final runtime of 1,499 frames. Using a 2013 Mac Pro with dual AMD graphics for approximately 24 hours, uh, UHD resolution frames were produced using an AI image restoration tool called Real ESR GAN. Of course, that does not factor in the countless hours selecting models, tuning parameters to achieve the intended aesthetic, and rendering features before commencing with the final work. Disco Diffusion is complex in that it exposes, depending on the version, more than 80 configuration parameters. Access to this complexity is a crucial advantage of using an open source system rather than the closed, typically commercial products that have arisen recently. Uh, for this presentation, discussing each parameter in detail is not necessary. However, online guides with cause and effect graphics are indispensable in this regard. Our primary concern is the configuration parameters that direct or affect theme and mood. Many of these parameters interact with one another and a process of trial and error is necessary to converge on the ideal setup for a particular work. The combinations chosen uh, determine the aesthetic that the artist is attempting to produce. While the term prompt engineering has become popular to describe the strategic use of keywords and construction of textual hints for the AI, the skillful manipulation of these configuration uh, parameters is equally important to set a mood for the work. Many traditional image composition techniques are available, such as color range, saturation, field of view, and more. One of the more important general configuration choices is the selection of image models. This is a key point at which theme plays a role. Disco Diffusion allows one to load custom visual models or select from several, several popular choices. For this project, project, we chose to enable VIT B32, VIT B16, uh, VIT L14336 pixels, RN50, and RN50 by 64. The selection and classification of images with which to construct the final image is determined by the choice of vision models. Models with prefixes VIT are vision transformer models that have recently uh, been shown to be up to four times as accurate and efficient as prior convolutional neural network models. These models are pre-trained on the ImageNet 21K dataset consisting of over 14 million images organized into 21,000 categories. In this case, we are loading three vision transformers of various resolutions and patch sizes into our system. 
because VIT L14336 is composed of relatively high resolution images, yes, 336 pixels is considered large, uh, it can consume more than 20 gigabytes of video memory. RN50 and RN50 by 64 are ResNet models, the more traditional computer vision CNN models. We experimented with several combinations of models and ultimately settled on these as demonstrating the greatest potential to recognize the concepts and thematic or artistic influences necessary in our scenes. For the sake of brevity in this presentation, I'll skip a discussion of the number of other configuration elements such as clip guidance scale, uh, turbo mode, and cut ink scheduling uh, that are also key contributors to the aesthetics produced by Disco Diffusion. The construction of a text prompt is vital to the text to image process. The goal is to be as descriptive as possible, imagining what a computer might need to make sense of our desires. In this case, after a period of trial and error, we converged on a set of prompts that invoked the mood intended for the work. The prompts are designed to be evocative, not literal, and are structured in a JSON format with commas separating sections that are weighted in importance. Disco Diffusion allows one to have multiple prompts prefixed by a frame number. The engine will apply the prompt to the entire range of frames within a block, then transition to the next block at the designated frame. For dissipative off-ramps, each of the 10 prompts or scenes were structured similarly. Segment 1 describes the primary content of the scene. Segment 2 describes the physical environment. Segment 3 identifies a preferred color palette. Segment 4 selects an artist or stylistic referent. Segment 5 uh, uh, contains keywords that are known to stimulate an imaging technique. And se uh, segment 6 uh, concerns the depth of focus uh, control. There's nothing that requires this format. We arrived at this method after a period of trial and error. Each of these segments is biased by adding a weighting factor at the end of each line. The weighting factors communicate to the engine how important a particular segment is in the context of the overall scene. The work is intended to be viewed on a UHD monitor oriented vertically, but this uh, uh, reduced image will suffice uh, here. To the uninitiated, it may look as if AI art production is simply a matter of feeding a bot a sentence and it draws a picture. 
That may be true concerning several of the black box commercial products that have been recently released and caught the attention of the press. However, artists working with advanced uh, scientific research published through open source forums like GitHub and Colab are developing new ways to work with AI in a natively electrate fashion, privileging the affective, visceral aspects of meaning making. The scene prompts and working processes above demonstrate how artists interface with theme and suggest mood when constructing these works. Motif, leap motif, theme, and mood are operationalized at multiple levels in the process, and artists are developing methods to direct these mechanisms to realize their intuitions. Motif is embodied in the structure of patterns defining the latent space represented in computer vision models. Theme emerges via techniques to reorganize or extract these patterns from massive data sets that can be fine-tuned for more refined thematic content when needed. The ambition is that theming applied to the poetics of motif will do for visceral sensation in electricity what conceptual categories did for rational logic in literacy. Theming in digital media augments mood or ambiance into a power of imagination that is as compelling in metaverse entertainment as scientific proof is in natural law. The purpose of metaverse is to innervate electricity. Thank you.